Krista Kafer here with Everyday Science. We're at the Step Garden at the Denver Botanic Gardens talking with Mike Bone, the curator. Why are we talking about this exhibit? Well, for one thing, it is absolutely gorgeous. And this exhibit has something to teach us. If you haven't noticed, it's hot and dry. We've got a lot of hot, dry summers ahead of us. That means changing how we use water and conserve water. That means changing how we garden. We need to bring our gardens in step with our environment. And this is Mike Bone. Mike Bone, tell us a little bit about this exhibit. So the step garden here is a culmination of a lot of different staff members' lifetimes of work. Gardening in Colorado, as you mentioned, is about gardening with less. Less water, less organic material, less opportunities but we find ways to create beautiful spaces. Um, and one of the goals of this garden is to bring the steppe climates to people's forefront of their thought, to teach people that we live in Denver in one of the great steppe regions of the world. And we wanna bring the rest of the world closer in and show people that these climates occur other places as well. And part of the goal is to showcase the similarities in the steppe regions of other parts of the world, as well as show the vast differences and how much diversity there is within this steppe climate region. So these plants over here are plants that would be uh, native to that area. I see ice plant. Yeah, and you can see there's some differences. So these ice plants, um, flower size is often much smaller than once plants have been hybridized and bred. Um, so these are plants that either have a direct tie back to wild origins or from collections that we as staff have made to these regions. Um, and this first area is for winter rainfall regime, and the next area is summer rainfall regime. When water happens naturally in the steppe often dictates the type of plant growth and also the diversity of plants in those regions as well. Now, are those uh, types of aloes there? So this bed is a, we also are incorporating sort of unique little vignettes inside. This bed is a succulent bed and we've created a very special soil mix in here uh, and it's insulated between some of these massive stones um, so that we're create, creating a small microclimate and we're testing and trialing plants uh, that often haven't been considered hardy here or may need some special environments. As a museum, it's our job to create collections and to give homes to collections of these living plants. So we'll often use techniques that maybe some home gardeners don't go to the extent of just to sort of push the boundaries on what's horticulturally and botanically possible. I think that's amazing. We're talking with Mike Bone. He is the curator of this amazing step garden. I, when I was in South Africa, I, uh, I saw lots of interesting aloes growing, and it makes me wonder what's the difference between an, an aloe, which I think is an old world plant, and an agave, which is a new world plant. Correct. Um, there's, there's some, there's a lot of differences, um, but the aloes, again, a big part of it's distribution, where they come from. Um, they're in different families, but they're still closely aligned. They're monocots, um, which brings their mm -hmm. family association closer together. That's a lot of the aloes, especially South African aloes, tend to almost be tree form, um, where agaves in North America are more clustering or pup forming type of plants. Um, so some of the, the big aloes that you see there and think of um, as dominant to the allopharax, the big, you know, 18, 20 foot tall tree uh -huh. aloes. Um, another interesting thing is most of the aloes are winter blooming plants um, and hybridizers and breeders working on those are all breeding for winter blooming climates um, where that doesn't necessarily fit and work as well in our Colorado climate. That makes sense to me. I, that it would be a little too tender to have here. Let's walk on over to the the Asian steppe area. What you see in Central Asia a lot. Central Asia is home to many of the bulbs, and mm -hmm. bulb a bulb or tuber will also act as that water storage. It's just in a different manifestation than sucking the leaves above ground. Which is why tulips do so well in Colorado. It's a similar kind of environment. Right. Uh, Johnny jump ups. Are they from Asia? So this is um, Viola tricolor, uh, and it's a collection that I made near Markakol Lake in the foothills of the Altai Mountains in Kazakhstan. Um, it's a steppe growing species, and many of the plants that we see, the violas and the pansies that we have, 
own their lineage back to wild species collected in the steppes of Central Asia. That makes sense. I have something called a clary sage, which has a bloom similar to this plant. Yeah, this is a salvia, and salvias um, have an incredible distribution. This is salvia chrysophylla, uh, and this is one that comes from Turkey, um, very dry parts of Turkey and that steppe. But um, the foliage on these is often fragrant. Um, the flowers are interesting and mm. are visited by bumblebees. Bumblebees are drawn towards blue flowers as well. And if you can look closely here, there's pollinators come in and fly around all of these. Some native bees. You also see we, here at the gardens we have a couple of honeybee hives. So they're really active in some of these sections now. I can't tell you how absolutely stunning I think this garden is. And I hope that folks, when they see this, say, hey, how can I get these plants? And it seems to me that a lot of these are available either at the Botanic Yearly Garden Sale, but also at places like O'Toole's and other garden shops. Right. I'm a big advocate for the local and independent garden centers, um, many of which also partner with a program that we're involved in here at the Botanic Gardens called Plant Select. And Plant Select is a program that's sort of a three-part partnership with Colorado State University, Denver Botanic Gardens, and local growers to bring plant material that's relevant for steppe regions to the marketplace so that people can know they have a product and a commodity that's good for their gardens. It's beautiful, it's tried at the Botanic Gardens, it has the backing of research um, from Colorado State University so we know that they're not going to be weeds, they're going to have multi-seasons of interest, and it's a crop that um, local growers can feel good about giving to their customers. Well, I have learned a ton from the Denver Botanic Gardens, also the CSU Extension, and other places about how to, to garden smart. I hope that folks come here, see this absolutely stunning garden, and learn a, a thing or two about how they can modify their own gardens to bring them in step with our environment.